Yo, what is going on? And welcome to another episode of the Urban Pitch Podcast, the beautiful game of life, part of the Believe Network. I'm Ramsey Abuchala, editor of UrbanPitch.com. We got, for the day, the executive director of the Vibes. One. Uh, the and one. The one and only <laughs> d- uh, executive director of Vibes, uh, Bridget Flores, is here. Julio Monterroso, who knows where he's he at? couldn't make it. Um, if you know where Julio's at, let us know. <laughs> yeah, he's he's MIA. He's been MIA, but um, the he show goes matter. on. And um, <laughs> uh, honestly... Who knows? This might be uh, this might be a, a full time thing now. He's um, on he's on thin ice, man. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have a very special guest in the building, in mm-hmm. person. It's our in first in person guest in in a while. I don't mm-hmm. remember. I can't think of the last one that we had. Um, but Angel City FC uh, uh, podcast co host. Uh, she's you know the the, the heart of the team. Uh, Paige Nielsen. What's going on? That was amazing. Heart of the team. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. like that. I mean, I I saw, I mean, I've seen the, the videos, you know, of the you being the locker room, you know, yeah. life of the, you know. Party? Bringing the vibes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Talking about executive director of vibes. I feel like hey. Angel City executive director of vibes is sitting right here. And that's why we were excited to have you on. Um, so I guess we could start there. Like what, how did you come into that role? Is that something that you felt like, because... You know, obviously with the, the team being new and everybody has to kind of figure out where they stand. And so how did that come about? Was that just you being you or did you see that <laughs> there needed there was a role to be filled? You're and you're like, filling I have to role. fill this yeah. gap. <laughs> you know, I've never wavered for who I am as a person. Um, so that comes naturally. I have a lot of experience. Um, went overseas for four years. You know, I got drafted and waved. And I was like, this league is crazy. (laughs) Like, I got to go overseas, figure out who I am um, with no one watching, no one judging me Mm -hmm, at all. mm -hmm. And I figured that out. And I came back to the league. And, you know, people are always stressed because it's such a hard league. And I'm like, you know what? I'll just bring the good vibes Um, because it's the coolest job out there, being a professional soccer player. And uh, you can't forget that sometimes. I mean, our job is really hard. Um, it's, it's a lot of work, um, for uh, inspiring the next generation out on the field, physically, mentally, all of these things. And I'm like, sometimes you just got to enjoy it while, while you can, Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. bring the vibes. Yeah. 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 Um, and I was listening to the episode, the Indies Cleats podcast episode that you have with Sydney LaRue and you're kind of comparing and contrasting your two style. Like she's more of the Zen, like, you know. Um, not meditation mode, but like she's has to control when like it's it's go time or not. Yeah. Do, do you feel like you uh, uh, when you see that you know other pe- players on the team are like trying to be calm? Like, do you like go further in, like into like the the vibes mode, or do you kind of like realize where uh, pick and choose your spots? Um, I go further in the vibes yeah, mode. Yeah, I feel like that's, <laughs> that's the way you got to do it. Like, you have Listen, to... I don't like make people come and dance with me. Before <laughs> yeah. They can do their own thing. But if I make, I dance hilarious. I'm not a great dancer. People will be like, yeah, she's good. Not great. <laughs> Confidence is key. But I make people feel welcome if they want to join. <laughs> right, you know? Right. That's, that's, that's the, I feel like. Bridge, you're you're big into that too. You're yeah. not forcing anybody no. to to do this. If they want to, you got to feel they can tag along, and right. if they don't, then they can just enjoy it. Right? Yeah, yeah, no pressure. Yeah, they enjoy it. They take videos. Right. Unfortunately. <laughs> I thought but, this was a safe space. Right. Locker, exactly. But. You're like, how about you come do this? Yeah. You want to try it out? Yeah. See how it is? I'll record you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online continues to be your number one source for all your basketball wagering needs, including pro and college hoops, throughout the year. With up to the minute odds, stats, and trends, you can follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs with in game live betting, contests, and all the best player props. Experience the world's best wagering platform anytime from your desktop or your mobile devices. Head to Bet Online today to become part of the team, and remember to use promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit bet online the game starts here do you ever feel like you have um have there has there ever been moments for you where you feel like it's not 100 percent in you to like bring it out but you know you have to because you see you kind of feel the room you feel the space out absolutely yeah almost every time yeah that's literally why I <laughs> okay <do it. laughs> okay 
Um, yeah, it makes me nervous when people, you know, it might people are too nervous before mm-hmm, the game mm-hmm. or they're not hype <laughs> enough. Um, you know, we all live two hours f- away from our stadium. Right. A lot of traffic. It's basically an away game. And you kind of die down in the Uber. People are taking naps mm-hmm. before the game, mm-hmm. which is good. But sometimes I'm like, y- y'all, we got to be ready. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And people get ready in their own ways. But I definitely make sure that people know <laughs> when the game is about to start. You're bringing the vibe. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. That's necessary. It <laughs> is. Very, very much so. And um, let's talk about the, the, the preseason because, you know, we were talking on the way in, you know, preseason wrapping up, you know, obviously the season. Um, I think we're recording this a little bit in advance, but I think by the time this airs, opening weekend will have uh, come and gone. So um, it's exciting time, obviously, um, both, I mean, from a player's perspective, but from a fan perspective as well. Um, what what have been the vibes like in in preseason camp so far? Uh, you know, wh- what can we expect from from the squad? How are we looking? Man, vibes have been crazy. <laughs> it's the most competitive team I've ever been on in the NWSL. Uh, our talent it is crazy. From 17 years old, 16 mm, yeah, years old, yeah. to 36 years old, and no one knows who's who's going to start, who's going to get minutes, who's going to travel. It's been so competitive. And you look at like a Man City and they have the same type of Mm. competitiveness Mm -hmm. and it makes championship teams Mm -hmm. if you're all in it together. And it's been so competitive and we've gotten so much better from the start of the preseason to now. And um, yeah, it's been hard, but we are ready. We are definitely ready to take on the Bay for our first game. And, you know, Becky has taken over and, and made the preseason. One of her first things she's, she ever told us was, you're going to wish preseason is over because I want to make it so hard and competitive that during the season it's going to feel like a breeze. Yeah. Which it's a 10-month season and, and it never mm-hmm. feels like a breeze. Right. It's so long. We travel long days. Right. There's so much stuff that goes on, injuries, um, losing, winning, whatever it may be. But, yeah, it's been really hard. And we all can't wait for the first game because of how hard it is. (laughs) Right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and um, talk about Becky Becky, because I feel like um, when she took over midway through last season is when, you know, the team kind of went on that that run, made the playoffs. Um, Now that she's had – uh, you know, a, a off season to kind of to plan things, and she's heading to her first full season as head coach. Um, what has what has have you felt like um, there's been any big changes from you know last season to this season, or is it kind of like trying to extend that momentum that that you guys um, really put forth? Like once she she took over, right? I think it was right before, like before or at the midway point of of last season. Yeah, it's a little bit of both. Like, we're definitely extending the momentum. We finally found a sense of identity within the team. You know, it takes, I always say, it takes three years for a new team to develop who they are Mm -hmm. with all the players coming in and out, with all coaches, uh, new staff, front office staff. It takes a while to build something. And she finally set a structure, whether that may be culture on the field, style of play, and... um, it was tested in our playoff game. You know, right. we we were so good, we only lost 1-0, but it's like, what's next? How can we become way better so we don't feel like we're in that position again because we got outplayed for only one half mm-hmm. for pretty much the entire time she took over. Yeah. And I think she took that. <laughs> we added more coaches to the staff who, who challenge her, but also elevate our game as individuals. Um, and uh, she stepped in a new role. You know, we all got close to her as a coach because she helped us individually when she was an assistant coach, and now she's a head coach. Right. So now we have all of these other coaches to help facilitate all of our individual growth, team g- growth, and she is building this entire culture, this winning culture and mentality. And um, it's really coming together. Yeah. It really is. You, you shared a little bit about like having to solidify an identity as a team. Like how would you describe the identity that you all hold as Angel City? I think resilience comes mm-hmm. to mind. 
Um, we've been through a lot, the core group of mm -hmm. people. Like starting out as an expansion team is really hard. Right. But without a facility, uh, all these players coming from different environments, cultures, our crazy NWSL, whatever's happened, all coming together and not knowing how we play, not knowing who we are as individuals. And we had to go through a lot to mm -hmm. get to where we are. Mm -hmm. um, even this year with um, not having a field, we've been kind of all over in preseason, um, different coaches stepping in and out. And um, Allie Riley has been an amazing captain. And uh, the sense of togetherness in a family helps our resiliency. And, you know, we all once want what's best for each other as individuals but also for the team and we're trying to build something here you know I always ask myself why am I still playing because my body hurts <laughs> <laughs> but it goes down to like purpose yeah. and I, some it's it's not just playing for me anymore it's building something and when I see all the all of those fans you know in our stadium which mm -hmm. is freaking awesome mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um it makes it all so worth it. And we all want to fight to mm -hmm. see that continue, continuing on for the next generation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we're all bought in. And I think that's what the, one of the best things Becky has done is, is to buy into this competitive winning team, whatever role that you may play on the team. Yeah. Yeah. There's a certain grittiness, I think, to the team, especially last season where um especially like those close games like at the finish it would get a little uh brought like wild like you know there'd be you know stretches of play where i mean from watching as a fan like it's it's very nerve-wracking i can only imagine what it is like as a player like you know one like a one goal game in the last minute uh as a defense like just trying yeah. to like scramble and and yeah. hold like hold the fort um as you know the the you're, to finish the game but I feel like especially from the first year to the second year the jump was noticeable in we weren't giving up late goals we were finishing wins um I say we because you know, <laughs> he's, uh, a, he's a season we're all in this together yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, we right. wouldn't be us without you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we so, really wouldn't <laughs> so, but but it really felt like you know um the finishing games was a, a big part especially during that stretch where you know um we were winning or I think it was an 11 match or the, like Street. defeatless like yeah. or, or uh, uh, without a loss. Um, so is that part of the mentality that, that Becky brought on is like this, this kind of like grittiness and you said resilience. Um, but I guess how, how do you go from like, how do you instill that culture? Because it takes time. Um, how, how does that like play out in, in the locker room? Yeah, one of the things we have done was uh, create this thing called Champions League. So every single practice and every single day, and we did this at North Carolina, Anson mm -hmm. was a huge part of that, uh, there's a Champions League point. So it might be 6v6 for that day, and then your name gets put on a board mm -hmm. to see how many Champions League points that you have. Mm -hmm. So it makes us all really angry and really competitive. <laughs> it really does. Um, but it's kind of changed our culture because, you know, some days if you're not feeling it, you might not bring it your all, but we're also competitive that we want that Champions League point because at the end of like three cycles of Champions League, you get a prize. Mm -hmm. But also it's just like pride. Right. <laughs> you're like, yeah, I'm the champions. We're also competitive. And um, so that's really helped. Um, we played like, we play more competition in training rather than like the X's and O's and, um, where every tackle matters, yeah. who who wins and who loses, and um, that's like been the key thing to our competitiveness. Right. But the other part is how how can you be a professional? So I don't know if you know this, but our league is the tightest league probably amongst all the leagues. Like anyone at the end of the season could have made playoffs last year. Right. Yeah. Um, with three games to go, right. which is every, like every team was still in the hunt. It's yeah. insane. Yeah. So those game winning moments in the last 10 minutes matter probably the most. And we sat, this is actually Freya's doing, we lost to Portland in the last 10 minutes or we tied, but those, those points mattered. Um, and how we just gave them the game. We we're up a goal. And we were still going to try and find a goal, but we could have, yeah. you know, managed the right. game better. And those are the moments that 
that will bring you to playoffs or bring you to the bottom of the table. Yeah. It's so important. Yeah. yeah was that the Bella Bixby? Like yeah. The, yeah. 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 So I went down, got elbowed in the head. We mismanaged it because our athletic trainer came on. And when you do that, I have to go off oh, mm. gotcha. for a concussion. Mm-hmm. And then we were out without a player. However, for a concussion, you can sub on a player. But the ref didn't allow us to do it at that time. Uh, so. All this concussion protocol. Like, come yeah. on. <laughs> come like, on. What, what happened? We used to be like, a real okay. league. Like, yeah. come on, you know? Like, I know. I was <laughs> stepping back on the field, and he was like, you have to get off. Uh, Dang. Um, so those are the, like, all of those little itty bitty pieces at the top. This is the the best professional, in my opinion, best professional league in women's soccer. Mm-hmm. You have to get all those small details yeah. right. Yeah, and then from there, losing late, or I don't know if it was a draw late, um, to the final match where you needed to win and get in against Portland, and was it three zero, four zero, five zero? I don't remember. Five one. Five one, yeah, yeah. I remember I was in attendance at that game, and just like, hopeful to get a win and then like I was like what the like what's going on because the I don't know if that we've scored that many goals in a game ever we like, haven't yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. we and, made history yeah <laughs> and, and I was I remember I think we went up like 3-0 in the first half or something like that and I remember thinking like what the like is this re- like am I like is this what what's going on is this what scripted? game is this? like yeah like like what I mean Sarah and I were at the back and we we're like this is the best game I've ever had. <laughs> I, yeah. I, yeah. I was hanging right. out I was hanging out <laughs> we didn't have to do anything that's yeah. the best it was the coolest because you know we worked hard on our attacking third stuff right. for, mm-hmm. with Becky the last half of the season and it all came to fruition mm-hmm. that game mm-hmm. yeah. like literally pattern plays directly in the game that we've been working all wow. season yeah. Yeah. Besides, you know, Sid's bicycle kick. Right. That wasn't in the plan. <laughs> yeah, like, <what? laughs> that was insane. Yeah. But that comes from the grittiness. And right. just, mm. like, um, you want to win games. We had no idea, actually, how many goals we needed to win by. We were just like, you know what? It's our last game. Let's freaking go. And it's Portland. We hate Portland. Yeah. They, were, they wanted to win the Shield that night, actually. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, pretty sure their owners came, whatever. Oh, but we're like, we're yeah, not the whole yeah, gang. Yeah. Even though we thought, hate San Diego, <laughs> right? We you thought, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So talk about the rivalries because um, obviously Bay FC joining the league, like that's going to be a, a. I mean, LA, San Francisco, and anything there's going to be rivalry. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, you mentioned hate Portland, San Diego. I feel like there was a big. Um, you know, I feel like the energy was. Like level would be you know higher for those games. I think the the first was that Becky's first game at San Diego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, what are the rivalries like? What are the certain teams that you have that you circle on the calendar? And what like do you anticipate that opening night against Bay FC to be you know the, the start of something new? We uh, I think we all get that question a lot, but like it's such a long season that we have to take one game at a time. Mm. And so I don't even look at, like, who we play on the calendar, besides, like, when I play Kansas City and all my family's coming from Nebraska. Right. You got you to gotta schedule you that. Got, you got to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but I think the best mentality going into every game is, like, you hate everyone. <laughs> I do hate everyone for so many reasons. <laughs> it Whether makes sense. You got to have that drive. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, like, obviously – as an entire club, we want to be the best team in California. Mm-hmm. So the Bay and San, San Diego, it's our goal to be definitely above them. Um, especially that San Diego on the shield last year. I'm really upset about that because I like the style that we play better. But yeah. don't tell them that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We won't say anything. No, I think they blocked us. Anyway, yeah, so okay, like, okay. Yeah. Don't talk to us. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah great. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, to be honest, like, um, Gotham is a rivalry because our coaches came from New York. Right, right, right. Uh, I was at the Spear for three years. Mm-hmm. That's a ri- like a personal rivalry. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, like I hate playing Orlando just cause it's so hot there mm. and they're really athletic, but unpredictable. Cause right. you don't know their style of yeah, play. Yeah. Houston, it's so hot and they're dirty. Like there's so many. <laughs> is there anything good you can say about, uh, any, like, is there a place you like going to? Or, like, <laughs> gosh. That you can, like, at least say, like, all right, I'm here. Not the, my favorite, but I enjoy it. Like I would say like, Kansas City. 
Okay. okay. Kansas so City is the only one, only because I really think we've played and beat them every time we played. <laughs> so I'm That's like, I respect nice. you. <laughs> right. I respect you. And your family watches. <laughs> yeah. Right. And they're out there. there. Okay. There you and go. And usually I play pretty well. Okay. So good memories there. Okay, there you go. That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. So. Basically, everywhere sucks, but the places where we win all the time, like, are that's, the best. That's, yeah, 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 they're yeah. the best. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, I think that's mentality wise, like, I mean, that's, that's, you can't really go, like, oh yeah, my friends are on these teams, like, you know, be buddy buddy. Right. Because yeah. I feel like you got to bring your A game. Right. You yeah, can't, you, yeah. you have to let that go for the, those 90 minutes. <laughs> I mean, I went, so Minch Purse hosted a, mm-hmm. a oh, reality off- TV show, yeah, 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 the right, off right. season. And I was so worried going into this house. All of these people did a trial season one the year before, so mm-hmm. they knew each other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I came in not knowing who was going to be there. Were you the only new newcomer? Me so- and Allie Watt from Orlando. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I come in, and like the first person I see was Michelle Lozier. And I was like, ooh, I've, I've <laughs> taken her out <laughs> a couple of times. How is this going to go? And she's super dope, super cool. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then one of the one of the persons, I was like, Gosh, Lola Bonta's twerk became famous right. because I tackled her in the box on accident. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it, it was the PK she scored, yeah. and it was because of me, uh. yeah. and, and she thanked me for it. <laughs> Anyways, we all became super close friends, but we're still the same competitive mm-hmm. on the field. Mm-hmm. Like, we bring it every yeah. single day, yeah. and I want to not kill them, but, like, I, I want to be the best player Severely out there. Severely harm them. Severely just harm bring their them ego. down. Right, right, right. Not, <laughs> not like, ego. physically, not physically, yeah. but just, like, right. you know, in the, in the metaphor for the game. Yeah. Right. Of, of, you know, the love of the game. Yes. It's, a, it's for the love of the <laughs> you game. You have to do it. You can't. You got to show up, show out. Yeah. <laughs> and so that season that, that you filmed, uh, this off season, is that the one that just got picked up? Um, or, uh, I, I, you know, there's been headlines, you know, Alexis Ohanian and then as well as Midge. Um, um, is that for that season or is that for an upcoming season? It's for this season I just filmed. Yeah. Okay, got it, got it. We haven't uh, announced the network we're going to be on, right. but hopefully it releases sometime in the summer mm-hmm. with the Olympics coexisting. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but it should be good. Yeah. It should be really good. Yeah. There's Love. a lot more work than I expected mic'd up all the time you don't know what you're gonna get mm. you really don't oh, what you're gonna say here yeah <laughs> yeah yeah they did a couple interviews where i could control what i said but i didn't mm. on the other mm. that's interesting parts. because i feel like real especially as reality tv is like exploded there's so much that is you know oh uh, like i feel like the novelty around the like spontaneous spontaneity of of the interactions, like you feel like, oh, this is probably staged. Like, you know, yeah. is this even like real? But that's interesting that, you know, that so you, you really did feel like it was, it caught you, some things would still catch you by surprise. Oh, for sure. Well, no, no, I'm really confident that I'll be liked in the show. It would be my goal to be the villain of a show because <laughs> <laughs> I, feel like I feel like you'd play that really well. <laughs> Just Thank like you. your competitiveness, you know, wanting to take people down. I feel like there's a pattern here. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not going to lie in this. You might have to cut this out. But the the ending part of the show, Maria Sanchez was asked, you know, what surprised you the most? And she was like, Paige. Um, because she's super intense on the soccer field, but mm. super chill. <laughs> and I was like, dang, it was my goal to be the villain. And uh, I even failed there. Yeah. <laughs> I did not make the Should've cut. I got up. tattoos for a reason. Yeah. Oh, and a tragus piercing, and it doesn't do me any good. Should have just shown up day one, you know, looked just at the like, toughest person in there. Just rolled just, your eyes, yeah. mad the dog everybody. <laughs> <laughs> what movie do they do? <laughs> little League? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, or little oh, Giants or something. Something like that. Like yeah. that. One of those uh, like the, those like '90s kids like sports movies. Right, they do right, that. Right. I yeah. think that's Little Giants, where yeah. like, the kid is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> so yeah, we'll we'll look out for that, and maybe if you get brought back for season two, you can kind of change your whole persona and then come in. Yeah. May you you say maybe I was the backup backup backup. Oh, you know, some people right. couldn't go, oh, okay. and I really gave Midge a hard time about that. And she mm. was like, you know, I really wanted you here because it'd be good training. And I was like, is that all I'm good for? <laughs> is good training? Mm. Then yes, I'm coming back. Right, right, right. Kobe Count Bryant style. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm obsessed with the sport. You better bring me back. <laughs> <laughs> and we went at it, and she's doing well with the U.S. I'm right. not. I'm yeah. not taking any credit. But I am. We 
we had a good preseason camp together. Mm, okay. So <laughs> that that iron sharpens iron yes. type stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and iron that. sharpens iron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. she's, she's balling out. Yeah, I mean, she's yeah. balling out. Yeah, yeah. They're playing right now. Um, oh, yeah. Today. I guess, yeah, great podcasting. This will be, like, the result will be right. out by the time this is up. But, I mean, just so you guys know, we're recording this as the uh, Gold Cup Games final is, 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 mm-hmm. is going on. Just, just, if, just in, just in case you wanted to know that. Um, um, but Timing. yeah, I want to talk about the uh, because you you briefly touched on it. Um, the the mix of the ages, the like the the mm-hmm. wide mm-hmm. range of you know um, from from the the you know the the U the U eighteen players that that the team has brought on to the more veteran players. Like, how does that? Uh, because I think a, a lot of the the, the content the team is. P- uh, putting out with like uh, Ali Riley and uh, Alyssa Thompson, and they did the whole schedule reveal. And Ali's going to Harvard Westlake, you know, <laughs> interviewing or, or, or going back to school. Um, what is that like? Because I feel like the team has brought on a lot of young players, you know, whether it's Giselle Thompson, Casey Fair, and um, um, uh, the, the the latest one, uh, Kennedy. Kennedy. Kennedy, yeah, right. Um, so how how is that, you know, uh, added to the dynamic of the team? Yeah, it's been interesting. Gosh, we did the math and we could be their mothers. <laughs> like barely, but right. I, I still Almost could be. Almost there, yeah. I could, yeah. Yeah, anyway. So, yeah, Casey, Kennedy, 16, 17. Um, it's actually nuts. Um, doesn't really change the dynamic. It it does, like, we all have to be in this together to kind of teach them what a professional league is mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. Especially even college players when they come. They right. play a three-month season. And, and they come into a 11th month, 10 month season, mm-hmm. including preseason, and it's so different. And you get paid to play, you know. Right. right. And then we uh, got the sponsorships. And, sponsorships, yeah. um, all of the <coughs> stuff we have to do on the side. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's really crazy. And it takes, it takes time to adapt, one, to the style of play and all the stuff on the side. And um, it's been really fun, though. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, we feel like it's a duty to bring everyone on board, whether they're young or, but it, it's just really exciting for our game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, when I was 16, I didn't, e- there wasn't a professional league, or maybe there was, I didn't know. Not as um, accessible maybe, or like, yeah, you know. Not accessible. It was my dream to be an M&A uh, in New York. And uh, I got drafted by accident, and that's how I, I showed up here. But people are forgo- forgoing college now to be a professional. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's so, like, it makes it all worth it. Mm-hmm. Like, we are growing this league, and it's so exciting. And these kids are one way <clears throat> better than I was. To, they're going to add to our game uh, now and, and forever and for the next generation. Mm-hmm. And I think that's mm-hmm. so cool. They're so mature already. Mm-hmm. I was not mature. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I have a problem, mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they're figuring it out, yeah. you know. Um, it's only been preseason. It's going to get crazy during season. So I'll, I'll have to keep you updated yeah, on that. Yeah, right. definitely. Um, but it's really exciting. I think from the outside perspective, um, and then also me being like a woman and obviously loving soccer and growing up wanting to like growing up loving the game but not knowing that that even like becoming a professional was a thing um it's really cool to see just like how the younger players are being integrated into the teams like just seeing you know you all like balance each other out and like hang out and bond um knowing that there's like an age difference but still like all coming together for the love of the game and for the game and the team, you know, and like wanting to show up um, to be the best team that, you know, we can be in LA. Um, I had um, a two part question. How do you go about talking to the, the younger players about how to be in this professional like league? And then how do they take that in? Like, how have you seen them embrace it or like kind of take it in? Cause I feel like that's a really important thing that you don't think about when you're like for young athletes now that want to get to that level, like I think those are the little things that you don't really think about. Like, how do you go about that? I think a lot of it happens organically. Mm -hmm. I think Alyssa, Giselle, Kennedy, Casey, they're our youngest players, Mm -hmm. but they are the most mature players I've ever had to play with. You know, they put their head down, they work hard. Mm -hmm. They're like, I'm going to be the best player I can Mm -hmm. be. And Mm -hmm. I'm so blessed to be in this environment to help me do that. Mm Um, two, I think naivety helps, mm-hmm. you know, 
when you get a little older, you understand like all the nuances of the league and injuries and um, all the other stuff. But being naive and going out there, having not a lot of expectations helps. Mm -hmm. You go out and you play free and um, you're 16. You can't really do any wrong. Right. (laughs) You know, you've made it this far. You're going to you're going to be doing well off. But like for us older players, you know, you have less to invest in. Mm -hmm. Um, So one, yeah, our players are awesome too. They're they're a little naive, which is a positive thing. what we do help with is to understand the professional game, um, understand how reco- recovery is going to be really mm. important um, just because of our crazy season in our league. Like when we play a game, I feel like obviously a, a truck ran over me, but like backed up and then ran over me again right. and backed up. <laughs> And it takes me three days to recover, but we might be on a flight to another game. Right, at that point. I played in South Korea, and it wasn't the case. Like, um, just physically demanding, it's Mm -hmm. so hard, Mm -hmm. and their bodies aren't fully developed yet. So it's going to be so important to, one, eat well, recover well, train your hardest, but also listen to your bodies, and that all takes so much time. Mm -hmm. And just kind of adapting with everything that happens. but I'm telling you, we're so blessed. They're all open and ready to learn. Um, and we have amazing resources at Angel City, and our coaches are doing a really good job with them. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. good. How do you all bond with them? How do you all make them feel comfortable? Because I feel like if I was 16 going into the league, I'd, I'd be super blessed, grateful, and also very intimidated because these are, like, people that possibly they looked up to, you know, growing up, being like, one day I want to be them, and now they're playing with you all, like, how do you bond with them? How do you, like, bring them into the team, get them, like, acclimated? We've done a lot of team activities. Okay. Um, which helps. Like, going to Melbourne, Florida helps, like, being in the hotel, doing team activities. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We did a staff newlywed game, which was hilarious. <laughs> um, but it is interesting because they have to have a different locker room for anyone under 18. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, which is good, you know, right. it's right. good for right. the separation. The boundaries are important. Though. Boundaries are important, but also you <laughs> want them to feel like they're just as part of all the locker room banter, whatever may right. happen in the locker room. Can you imagine it's just what, like two, three of them? Yeah. The <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they like, can't so. shower in our showers. Oh, wow. Um, but I actually want to credit Alyssa Thompson. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's brought in a lot of these younger girls and made them feel really comfortable. Yeah. I think... And, and Ali, our team culture is one of the best in the leagues. I was so scared when I was 22 going mm-hmm. into Seattle, and it was a great team, but I didn't feel welcomed mm-hmm. at all, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. at all. But it could have been like, you know, I don't think I'm good enough, whatever it may be. But we have such a good team culture, and we talk to everyone. We ask them, you know, how's it going? Uh, Kennedy has been super sweet asking me like if she's in good spots for me like what else can I do better and I'm like you guys are far beyond your years good job to your parents (laughs) yeah they're doing good (laughs) yeah I I would say nothing as a 16 year old (laughs) me either probably yeah probably stand around like okay (laughs) like do you need anything yeah (laughs) should I take the balls I don't know (laughs) you need me to lay down cones right I don't know (laughs) should I go set up the field (laughs) at Seattle that's what I did I asked all the older girls to like if they ever want to do extras to use me, mm-hmm. I was so tired. I did extras with everyone. I had three oh, jobs. Oh, they were they they definitely took advantage they of took it. They took advantage of it. <laughs> I had three jobs. My mom just passed, and I was like, Oh man, man, I didn't mean it. It was, yeah. just, <laughs> it was an empty gesture. Was, like, yeah. You weren't supposed to I take my yeah, offer. Like I, I didn't actually mean that yeah. when I said that. You know, <laughs> I was kidding. I didn't think you were gonna take me up on it. <laughs> yeah. I rode my bike to the freaking practice. Wow. Trail. And that's a workout in itself. It is. In Seattle, there's hills. Ooh. There's lots of hills. Mm-mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I want to talk about fitness because, um, first off, uh, summer's coming up. What supplements do I need to take to get, uh, <laughs> to, like, to, to get, you know, shredded as possible? Am I, do, I, do I need creatine? Summer body. I'm not on, I'm, I'm not on anything right now. I'm not even on a protein powder, but, like, what, where, like, what's um, the list of things that I need to get on? Uh, that's a good question. 
I'm gonna be very disappointing and say that <laughs> it mostly comes from food and water. That's, see, I was, I was. You have I, testosterone. I knew, I knew that was More gonna be. Yeah, yeah, I knew that was gonna be the uh, the answer. I was just, I was hoping, hoping for there to be like some magic. Yeah, yeah. HGH. You know? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> listen, listen. I, uh, I mean, I would, I would, if it was legal. And didn't give any harmful effects. I would. <laughs> right, right, right. So if it wasn't like it was. Yeah, yeah basically yeah. it's on you. Just, yeah. Just like cocaine, really. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Right, If right. it didn't give me drain bam and shit. <laughs> didn't have all those side effects. Right, right, yeah. right, right, right. Okay, got it, got um, it. So. I'm just kidding. I just started taking beta alanine. Okay, yeah. Do you know what beta yeah, alanine yeah, 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 I yeah. hated it. It's like, the, it's like the thing that makes you tingly. Yep. Yeah, yeah. What I hated is it? it? Like, it actually makes your ATP... Basically, your recovery a lot faster. Mm, um, got it. I took biology once. ATPP mm -hmm. recycle, so you recover, so you can actually produce more weight in the gym faster. Oh, or interesting. running yeah. it helps my. I realize it helps my lactic acid for mm -hmm. fitness. Mm -hmm. So like when I feel it in my legs, and then I hit another level. Um, didn't realize that because I hated the itchy feel until really? I started taking it this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a, a bunch of blood work done, and my new dietitian. Don't call them nutritionists; they're dietitians. Mm -hmm. uh, told me that it would help, and it's helping a lot. Yeah, I took a sam my my um, old roommate had a sam like a bunch of samples of like this pre workout, and I took it, and I thought I was like I thought I was dying. Like, yeah. My face was like <laughs> like it felt like there's like needles going. On. I was like, what is like what? what I called this? him. I was like, hey man, like what's going on? What's in this stuff that you that you gave me? He goes, oh no, that's normal. And I after that, like I I couldn't do it, and then. Every once in a while now, I'll take like a pre-workout and they'll, it'll be in pre-workout. And I've kind of gotten used to that, that mm -hmm. feeling and mm -hmm. almost mm -hmm. like and learn to enjoy it kind of because it, you know, it, it kind of feels like, you know, okay, like You're ready things to are go. starting to, things are starting to get it's going. It's like hitting you. Know? you. Yeah, yeah. But the first, I remember because I didn't, I had no idea what, like what was going on. And I thought like I was having like an allergic reaction or like, <laughs> Me too. I was going to like I was like, what did I eat? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was scary. It was, and then plus the, you know, the. Uh, added caffeine and all the other stuff like you know you're, you're starting to get like wired and yeah so I take like half a caffeine pill before the game too <laughs> Damn. Yeah. you can imagine my stomach after again <laughs> it's just not great just going through it. <laughs> it's just, uh, you just go through it but I'm telling you it helps and I stopped doing the powder form of like pre-workout okay. it mm -hmm. makes me like a little like nauseous I do the pill form of okay. beta alanine. Oh, gotcha. Mm. And it, it, the tingly lasts like through warm up, and then you don't feel it anymore. And then, like, I really do feel more energy um, and multivitamins, and then cherry juice after training. Mm. <laughs> I heard about that. Cherry juice. Um, What's the benefit there? Anti inflammatory mm. and helps you sleep and like recover better. Nice. I actually yes. think I saw Sarah Gordon posting about that. I think maybe but we Possibly. all take it yeah. it's in our yeah. fridge and uh there's little like it's a big bottle we have mm -hmm. little shot glasses and we all take a shot after like a really hard day it helps Same. a lot i do that too yeah <laughs> yeah yeah but I mean, of tequila cherry, but, yeah. You know, yeah tequila yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> listen catch me in the off season or off days right, when right. i'm there i'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to start doing that because yeah this for the sleep and the anti-inflammatory yeah you can actually make a mocktail uh, lifestyle changes mm -hmm. <laughs> with uh, tart cherry juice and like sparkling water mm. and then it's like a sparkling tart cherry juice mocktail and yeah. then you can add vodka if you right. really want yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then you'll desire. sleep really just, well good. then I mean then you're like it bounces everything out so yeah. it's, like zero. it's like just <laughs> yeah. drinking water you know like. right <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so I want to talk about the, the podcast because, you know, obviously, um, being this is the form that we're, we're um, discussing, like, how did the, the whole thing start? Because I think it's kind of taken off and it, like the, a lot of the stuff that you guys have done is, is super entertaining. The guests that you've had are, are, are awesome. So um, I wanted to give you the, the chance to kind of talk about it and, and, and talk about the journey and, and all that because, you know, it was, it was super cool to see. Great. It's it's kind of a long story, but I'll make it short. Mm -hmm. Sure. Maybe not. We'll see. We're here for it. Uh, <laughs> so I got reached out by Vice Network. You know Vice? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, to do a show about athlete activism in New York in one of the off seasons. So I went. I did. Um, I did stuff about LGBTQ. I don't know. I was on this podcast and it was really cool. One of the producers of that podcast is Rebecca Donahue. She's also a season ticket holder at Angel City. Mm. And uh, 
I'm going to give her a lot of credit. She was like, what can we do with you, Paige? We, I really like you, you know. She she made this whole PowerPoint presentation about how I'd be great on a podcast, TV show, made a video, and and sold it to production companies or tried to sell it to production companies. She worked so hard on it. Wow. Um, I was like, okay. I was along for the ride. Mm -hmm. But I really wanted to do it. More my approach was like, uh, the mental side of being an athlete because I, I really think that's so important and I love stories of of people being becoming their best that they can be um, but it took a different direction she sold it to Megawatt Productions yeah. Megan Gaines who um, helps with Always Sunny in Philadelphia is a director of it she loved it her husband is Humphrey who is the sporting director for Rexham? Okay. Uh, works with Rob right. and Ryan Reynolds. Right. And she was like, "Okay, if you have this men's soccer thing, I'm gonna have this women's soccer thing mm -hmm. when it's blowing up." Mm -hmm. And she really likes me. She was like, "I would love if she could do something in my realm with comedians and bringing yeah. more people to soccer, not just soccer avid right. fans." And so she was like, we should interview eight comedians, see who you best fit with. And finally, the last comedian that I interviewed, I just asked him a bunch of questions and like we talked. Um, she came back from a Europe trip, barely. Uh, it was T and Tran. She was by far, I mean, there's there other people, right. which Lauren Walker was also a part of the show. She was awesome. Just didn't know soccer. Mm. <laughs> So we added her as a right. fan, yeah. and we yeah. recruited her, and now she comes to a lot of the games, yeah. which, mm -hmm. yeah. which is great. She's great. Uh, Tian knew soccer and was hilarious. Um, we bonded, and uh, we created the show. Yeah. Was there like a, did we just become best friends like moment? Moment. <laughs> I think so. I think when she said I was like the best person she's ever met. Aww. Whoa. I'm, she didn't During say the that, interview? but I felt it. Oh. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, wow. She was really trying to sell herself. <laughs> she did it. She did it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she was like, um, do you know soccer? I know more than you are. Like, do you I, even play? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> She's an avid. Right. She went to the 99 World Cup at the Rose Bowl, and I maybe she didn't win. She would wash it in a parking lot. Something, something <laughs> happened, but. Uh, she's a better fan than I, yeah. I was. Yeah. I grew up in Nebraska, watched football and basketball, and thought right. men only played sports. Mm -hmm. So it's not fair, not fair. <laughs> but we, but we hit it off, and she taught me a lot about soccer, unfortunately, and vice versa. And uh, yeah, she's she's hilarious. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever met how I met your father with Hillary Duff, but. She's the sister, Ellen, on it, the gay sister, of course. Oh, <laughs> and it. she's so funny. Yeah, <laughs> that's dope. Do yeah. you, so what, Um, can you tell us a little bit about like, what is the vision and like the purpose behind the space? Like, what are you all aiming to talk about? Like, who do you bring in? Um, is it like just soccer? What, what, what vibe do you guys have going? The purpose is to get your random adults excited about women's soccer. Okay, I love that. And create more open spaces to have light and funny conversations. Mm -hmm. A lot of us, like, you see on Twitter, on in Instagram, like, fighting for, for women playing in sports or or just a lot of, which is really great. Mm -hmm. but it's exhausting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can come here, have an open space. You can hate women's soccer and we'll be like, okay, why? <laughs> do you like bowling or golf or I don't know <laughs> but like it's supposed to be like a really fun open forum where people feel comfortable coming and get excited about this dope ass sport mm -hmm. that we play and if you're not excited about it fine but you can have some comedy with yeah it. yeah definitely yeah who have you had that has been someone that has come by and you've interviewed or you've talked with and they weren't as excited but the conversation in itself was really good and like it turned out to be exactly that that's a good question you mean guest yeah like have you had that experience yet I, I've had many of those experiences with my show I think I've seen a lot of comments on our YouTubes mm. and stuff saying who is this person like they're so funny 
Okay, okay. Uh, positive. Okay. I, w- I, w- oh, I thought you we met, met a lot of negative. Right. right. So when you when you said the YouTube, I was reading the YouTube comments. My first thought was, oh no, the that's haters. a mistake. That's mis- because the YouTube com like I don't know what it is about YouTube comment sections, but worse than Instagram, worse <laughs> yeah. than Twitter. Like I've worse than TikTok. Uh, we're some Reddit, oh, and that's bad. Reddit, Reddit's tough. Reddit is Reddit's yeah. tough. Yeah, um, it's I've, I, because we have the the website, and so I've written stories, and that I post onto Reddit, and like to whatever, like if it's like a. <clears throat> LAFC or even an Angel City story, like I'll post it to the Angel City Reddit or this doesn't like obviously it hasn't. This is a hypothetical, but then I'll get like stuff like, dude, what the hell is this guy even talking about? Like, and then it's like it's like, why did I even, why did I even share <laughs> that? You, you know, question but, your so whole like, stuff. but we welcome all the haters. It helps our algorithm. Yeah, right, exactly. That so so <laughs> that I had to. It took me a while to to you know get over the fact that it's like okay, dude, like they're reading your they're reading it or they're mm-hmm. watching it mm-hmm. and it's better than no one. Saying it anything or, or no one, it. you know. So that took me a minute to get over. But when you first said YouTube comments, I was like, like that just he initiated like the. He was Listen, triggered. all the fans <laughs> from Always Sunny in Philadelphia came over and started watching this. That's. I mean, that's a, a that's a big like very it's dedicated. It's a pool fan. of people that like that type of humor, uh-huh, and it's uh-huh. crazy humor. Yeah. 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 It's like we knew what we were we were getting at, but I think. Um, it got a lot of attraction. I walk around LA getting noticed and wow. saying, we love your podcast. From the podcast. Yeah, that's great. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah, not even from the team. Yeah. Yeah. From the podcast, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like the team doesn't even listen to it. I, and I wouldn't say that because I'm like, no, no, no. But every time I'm out with my sister, she's been here for 14 years. Mm-hmm. She's she's also, I don't know, D-list celebrity fitness influencer. She's okay. one of the best people I know. <laughs> Beautiful. Every time we walk around, people come up to me and she's like what the <laughs> like, you, i'm right here. I've been here for 14 years <laughs> and everyone knows you um that no she's so really funny. proud of me she she schedules her entire year around our games it's really cute Aww. but um but yeah i anyways the haters just god i look at all those comments and i'm like that is so sad that you're so threatened by us mm. yeah it's actually kind of great mm. and yeah. the more we just keep going I feel like that feeds into your persona too, as like the, like the. the I mean, you know, I know you said you wanted to be the villain, but yeah. like you know, like I feel like that feeds that feeds right into that. It persona. gives me purpose, yeah. right? I always want like, to be honest, I went through a hard time um, when my mom passed, mm-hmm. and I became a little pessimistic about life. I'm like, gosh, why am I playing mm-hmm. soccer? I feel so selfish. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I was overseas, didn't really have much of a purpose, but that gives me purpose Mm. it fuels my fire so much and so maybe that's why i did it yeah come at me for the the haters for yeah to grow the sport Mm. yeah the numbers don't lie so many people are watching when it's accessible when it is accessible yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and i'm like we're cool people (laughs) we're badass Mm -hmm. women Mm -hmm. who wouldn't want to support that Mm. you know exactly yeah. And not just daughters, pe- like adults, Everybody. friends. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And if you're not, you're missing out. You're missing out. Yeah, yeah. it's fun. The vibes are over here. The right. vibes. <laughs> so they're over here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, Paige. Before we wrap things up, um, we do like to talk about music a lot on on the um, on the show. So, who are some of the artists that you're listening to? What's on your playlist? And um, you know, what like put us on game to to what you're what yeah. were you listening to? What vibes? <laughs> Like, what's your, what's your, like, maybe go-to artist to hype you up before a game or your workout playlist? Okay, so I'm, I'm not going to lie, I do sing Usher before every game in the yeah, car. Yeah, okay. Like, the, all the We've love the stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's really good. Do you have, like, the, the glitch move down? That you know, I did it ball? for the first time in the video Allie Riley just posted. I saw it. Wasn't I great. saw it. That was, that not was pretty Not fair, because she does it often. <laughs> Randomly in stores, she told me. She goes, sometimes I just whip out the glitch in stores <laughs> when Lucas is getting And I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> what reason? For, <laughs> for who? Yeah, for, I, she was practicing for the video and she made me look oh, bad. Oh, got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I like Dave and Burna Boy. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a vibe. I've gotten into like Latin and Colombian music a lot. <gasps> yes. Um, just really good dance vibes. Mm-hmm. But if I'm gonna be chill, because I'm I'm a very chill person. I uh, who are my 
Ziggy Alberts and Dermot Kennedy, and you probably do you know them? Uh, I don't. I, I is it like uh, kind of like folk yeah. Uh, type? Yeah. Okay. So then I I'm familiar. Ben Howard. Yeah. Very folk. Uh, gets in my zen. Mm-hmm. Um, I get stressed a lot, but that that helps me. The beach is too far away to get zen, so yeah. I gotta <laughs> use music. Right. Um, but like any British rappers. Dave, Dave Burn is, Boy. Yeah, yeah, Dave is up there. Dave, yeah. Pop Smoke. Mm. Pop Smoke's good. R.I.P. Pop Smoke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's good. He's yeah. Good. yeah. Uh, honestly, I had older siblings, um, like by a lot, 10, 8, 6. Mm-hmm. They'd get mad at me if I said that. But um, like B.I.G., Tupac. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. I like this playlist. Yeah. Yeah. This is some good good stuff on it. Even Nelly. Okay. Sometimes I envision myself with band aid, and I'm like, it's one day just, yeah. yeah. I mean, Midwest represent, you know, like yeah, like, yeah. yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. And Tech Nine is from like Kansas. right. He's Kansas City. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. So yeah, my <laughs> that was my favorite growing up to get hyped for high school games and my. I was like so shy, I would never curse or anything, <laughs> but I put the song on and it was y'all can't F with us. <laughs> and, I was, and I was like so shy, I turned it <laughs> off. And my mom was like, turn that back on. <laughs> That's one of my favorite songs to date. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah, mom. That's, that's a very, um, uh, you know. Encouraging. The, yeah, yeah, because. The, bad behavior in you yeah sometimes we gotta let it out yeah. just sometimes yeah Co- time. kobe described it as a cage when you're mm-hmm. in that cage you're a different person yeah, yeah. You when are. you're out of the cage then i'm the ben howard ziggy alberts vibe right yeah <laughs> that's good because i my mom borrowed my ipod when i was like in sixth grade oh, and gosh. we had a we that's had a big good. talk afterwards Ooh. about the music i was listening to um <laughs> I and I get that. I had yeah. older brothers. Yeah. Learned yeah. every word to crazy rap, Cole forty five and like fourth grade. <coughs> right. right. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. 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 But I mean that's just catchy. Like, like what you, was the you point? It's catchy. Yeah. It's catchy. Like, it I, is catchy. <laughs> but it's kinda crazy to think that like you were in middle school singing these songs. <laughs> like <laughs> word for word <laughs> yeah. or elementary. Yeah. In word my for neck, word? my back. Yeah. 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 Like, like really feeling it too. Like <laughs> Getting into it, yeah. <laughs> you and now no you think about it, it's just like, like whoa, saying. yeah, exactly. It was, it was, I think it was either that or uh, like a Lil John song that my mom specifically said, I like, I was, I was listening to this. You made me listen to <laughs> yeah. like, what, why would you introduce this to me? Yeah. And I, I didn't felt, even know this existed. Yeah, I, I felt bad, but then like, you know, a week passed and I was like, just like put it back on. Yeah, I was yeah, like, you yeah. know, like, this is, yeah. this is the best. I, I was able to get yeah. away with it because growing up, my parents didn't really know English, so I would be playing yeah. these jams in the car. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know what it was saying <laughs> unless it said like the f word then they heard that yeah but if it wasn't that they didn't know what my neck and my back meant so i was like yeah <laughs> mom's just in there like driving <laughs> vibing with me and i'm like yeah uh, you're like have you seen that video of uh the girl she's locked in the car and i think it's uh my neck my back is playing uh-huh. and like her mom is like knocking on the door to open the car door <laughs> and then she just turns up the volume <laughs> and, like, just, and like, she's just going just vibing out in the car she's like seven that like, is so, hilarious like, just, yeah, i yeah, haven't seen that video oh my, it cracks me up every time. Yeah, oh my yeah, goodness yeah. Yeah. Um, good time <laughs> yeah but Paige uh thank you so much for 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 joining um uh, taking the time to talk to us so the, I mean this hour f- flew by like Dang. Was, like um but those are always I feel like the best episodes mm-hmm. when we have to wrap things up when like it just feels like we just started but um before we go is there anything else that, that you wanted to to uh plug or shout out or no I think um I think I'm good thank you okay. so much for having me yeah. this yeah, is we awesome appreciate you coming I love by. talking about our team yeah and myself Right. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, but, mainly uh, myself. Not really, though. <laughs> not really. He's like, it's me. I'm the team. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you said I was hey. the heart and soul. Right. You the, did say the, that. The heartbeat, you know? Like, like Paige I, is going to go back to the locker room and be like, hey, I am the pitch. heart yeah. and soul. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I it's going to be us. like on movie posters and like the, the, the critics, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, quotes. It's yeah. going to be that, but on, on, your, on the back of your t-shirt. Yeah. Like, yeah. Which reminds me, have you seen the Netflix show Warrior at all? Oh, not yet. The ne- I've seen. Is that based about on the movie? tongs of San Francisco? Oh no, no. Anyways, he was the heart of soul of mm. Chinatown, but it was. I just. I just finished it, and it was one of my favorite shows. Okay, well, that's we'll how I feel. And now you're realizing you're the heart and soul yes. of the team. Yeah, every time I'm I'm running, I'm like, 
you know, they I got back yeah. hurts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm carrying everybody. Yeah. <laughs> just looking at the team stretching, warming up, like, you guys would like, do nothing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if only you knew. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's All right, Paige, Paige Nielsen, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this has been the Urban Pitch Podcast, the People Game of Life, part of the Believe Network. For Bridget Flores, Paige Nielsen, I'm Ramsey Abushala. Keep it topped in. We got more stuff coming, but until then, we'll see y'all next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>